Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are talking about Phaser. We are talking about Phaser because Phaser 3.20 was just released and we'll get to the details of that in just a second. But first I'm gonna do kind of a quick overview of what Phaser is all about and why I'm talking about it. Now this is the first release since August so there's some good stuff in there. But what is Phaser? Well, Phaser is a desktop and mobile HTML5 game framework. It's pretty much everything you need to make a game except for say a level editor. And even then it's got full support for things like Tile, the TMX and TSX file importing. So it's everything you need to create a 2D game that runs in your browser or in something like Electron. Now, if you're interested in checking out Phaser, head on over to phaser.io. Uh, you'll see here, we've got a bit of an overview of kind of features and functionalities that are offered, including WebGL and Canvas, Preloader, Physics, Sprites, Groups, Animation, Particles, Cameras, Input Handling, Sound, Tile Maps, Device Scaling, Plugin System, Mobile Browser Support, and so on. So this is a pretty comprehensive game framework. And it's been around for quite a while. First Phaser 2, and now we're into Phaser 3. And I think the thing Phaser 4 is off on the horizon. So it is an impressive framework. And again, if I was going to make a game that ran in the browser in 2D, Phaser is probably the tool I would actually use. Now, one of the reasons why I haven't actually done a really in-depth tutorial, I keep meaning to and I keep wanting to, but it's kind of not a huge priority to me because of this. So you come in here to the phaser.oeo website and click examples. This is impressive as hell. There are 1,743 examples available in a broad different number of categories, such as cameras, events, uh, loaders, input handling, and so on. So if you're coming in here and you need to work on working with the Spine plugin system, you come in here, there are 17 different tutorials on working with Spine. And anything you come in here, you can actually go ahead and select it, and it'll come down and you can actually run it directly um, within, so there you see the example actually running. And if you want to, you can jump in and actually edit the results. You can also have it run against multiple different versions of Phaser. And as you will see, Fitoria, the new version 3.20 that we are covering today is already supported in the example system. So if you want to hit edit and you'll jump in and see the code running in the Phaser 3 sandbox. So it is a very comprehensive framework with really good supporting materials for getting you up and going. Although I do intend to do a getting started tutorial at one of these days. I promise I actually really do intend to. So anyways, on to 3.20. This is from the Patreon page for uh, Phaser itself. And I'm gonna just skim over it. It's quite a long read, but I will link all of these things down below. We'll also be jumping into the change log in just a second, but there's three major highlight features in Phaser 3.20. Now, the first one is a video object. Now, Phaser 2 had a visual video object, but the weird thing is browsers have gotten a little bit more particular about auto playing you know if you go to youtube now in uh, say firefox you'll notice up in the url bar you now have to press the play button to get a video to start playing well that kind of wreaks havoc on uh, game engines that want to stream in video and that's part of what has tried to be stopped solved in this solution so you see here like auto playing problems here so they're doing this in the form of a promise that is sent off um you can now specify as part of the loader call if the video has audio or not. This lets players set the video to muted state immediately, allowing playback to commence right away. So that is cool. If you don't have audio in your video, so if it's like motion capture or something only, you can have it automatically play. But you can see playback is now also emits a promise. You can listen for resolution of this promise and know when playback can begin or the failure to know playback is blocked. So there's the downside. Depending on what browser you're actually using, there is a chance that you're just not going to be able to playback video, which is unfortunate, but that's how it works. Um, he was trying to do jump around like a, a Dragon's Lair kind of emulation, but unfortunately, uh, browser support for just jumping to direct points in time isn't supported. Uh, however, there is the ability to jump relative, so you can jump two and a half seconds forward. Uh, you can jump to a timestamp, or you give it a percentage that's based on the total video duration. Um, so that is definitely cool support. There's also support for uh, transparent video um, via the web M videos, which Chrome supports, but only a certain people, a certain number of videos actually support transparent video, which is kind of unfortunate. But if you wanted to do something like say motion captured video for say like a Mortal Kombat one or two style sprites, uh, and you had transparency in it with WebM, you should be able to get that up and running, but that will only work on certain browsers, unfortunately. The next major feature here is the Spine plugin. It basically got uh, some new features and updates, plus it got updated to use the 3.8 version of Spine's current runtime. And then finally, we have the pixel art game configuration. This was a setting to um, basically make your uh, results look pixel arty so it doesn't smooth them out, doesn't alias them. Uh, so it would set the canvas to use nearest neighbor scaling, then all textures would use a linear filter mode so they retained their pixel crispness when scaled. These two aspects worked. Uh, the problem is they only worked um, for certain game objects. So um, 
particle emitter, bitmap, text, tile map, and so on, all ignored it. So if your matrix game entirely out of sprites, you would get that pixely look. But if you started using particle systems or bitmap text or normal text or tile maps from another, um, something like tile, like I mentioned earlier on, they wouldn't get that pixelated look. So he's gone through um, and changed it so that everything will respect that. Uh, so I spent a good while going through everything I could find, making sure that all those objects which previously ignored it now respect it. So if you're going for that pixel art look, you can use the, what is it actual name? Pixel art game configuration and you are good to go. Um, so that is the, the three major features. So spine update, video playback, and that pixel art game configuration. Those are the biggies. If you want to read more details, of course, I will link this patron post for um, what was all about it. And then finally, we get into the, uh, the game release. So you can see here is the process of loading a video. And here is the process of adding a video. And then once it's added, this is actually really kind of cool, especially if you know how um, Phaser works. Once it's added, it's just a game object, like a sprite. So you can uh, scale, rotate, crop, tint, interactive, uh, give physics to it, and so on, a video. So if you want to have your main character sprite to be a video, you can. And you can tint it, you can rotate it, you can scale it, and so on. So that's really cool. Um, again, unfortunately, WebM for the transparent video is only available in a subset of browsers. Uh, fortunately, that subset is Chrome, which means it now works on uh, pretty much everything is based on Chrome that isn't called Firefox now, I think, now that Edge is on Chrome or Chromium anyway. So hopefully WebM support is going to be coming uh, more ubiquitous soon. Um, and then, yeah, so we got more details on how the video object works and breaks down. I'm not gonna get into the, the weeds of it. Uh, we got more updates on what has changed with the uh, Spine plugin, including some of the bug fixes that went along with that and um, some changes to the process. Uh, Facebook Instant Games plugin, uh, has some new love and features there. Uh, Arcade Physics got some fixes, including uh, frictions starting to flip out in the past, physics objects dipping into the floor, and when objects dip into the floor, their rest velocity is non-zero. This can affect debug and other logic. So you see some fixes there, and then we got a number of smaller new features in this release as well. And that is about it. Now, if you get to the bottom of the release notes, which I will, of course, link as well, you can find versions of it available here. You should also be able to get it off of the GitHub page as well. And speaking of which, we are on said GitHub page right now. You will notice it is under Photon Storm Phaser. So if you want to grab it, it is available Photon Storm uh, at github.com forward slash photon storm forward slash phaser. Of course, we'll link that as well. You'll notice phaser is under the MIT open source license, which means you can do pretty much what you need with it. It's a very liberal license. By the way, if you ever wonder what a license is all about when you're on GitHub, just click it. It will actually bring you to a top level didn't read version of what it is all about. So you basically can't sue them and you get no warranty. So if this causes your cat to explode, uh, they are not to blame. So that is about it. That is Phaser uh, 3.20. It's nice to see that it, it's improving at the rate that it is. This is definitely a nice development. Again, I, I do really like this uh, framework. The, the huge amount of getting started and learning materials that are out there. Again, we'll go into the learning section. You'll see there is a getting started material right here. 1,743 uh, code examples. The documentation is very solid. Um, this has kind of kept me from bothering with the tutorial. But again, I, I want you guys to let me know. Would you be interested in seeing something or is it just so well covered that it's kind of pointless at this point in time? Also curious to hear what you guys actually think of Phaser in general. Have you checked it out? I know some of you guys just straight out hate everything to do with the browser, but uh, I, you know, I enjoy it. Uh, I keep covering Phaser and I will keep covering Phaser. So hopefully at least, uh, at least three or four of you also find Phaser interesting. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.